Okay, this is where we're at in August. We're getting to the end of August already. We got several houses going. If you were here last month, you get to see the really big one that's already gone out. That was my best one yet. It was 24 footer. Now we have a 28, and this is a Victorian. It's going to have a full screen back porch. We're going to go inside and look at it. This is actually in the second stage going to the interior skins next. We're going to be going ahead and doing the insulation, hopefully tomorrow or Saturday, and that allows us to then go ahead and put the interior skin on. We'll get to see that in a second. Meanwhile, over here, we're just finishing up on a great house. This is the back view of the screen porch, and on the front view is going to be the actual front porch. Um, the bathroom's finished, the kitchen's finished. We're doing the Murphy bed in this one, so this is just the beginning of the Murphy bed stage. And the final one over there is the writer's cottage, and it's getting ready to ship. It'll be the next one to ship, and it's just finishing up. And that's got some of the most incredible parts yet, because it's got some beautiful twists with it, uh, black walnut and uh, other elements inside that we haven't done it yet. So come on by and see what we got. We'll go on and show you something new. So as you come in here, you're basically getting a chance to view the framing stage completed, the exterior skin stage completed. The windows are installed, the doors are installed, the wiring is installed, the plumbing is prepped. So what we have left now is to go ahead and build the insulation in and then put the interior skins on. Then we do interior trim. This shows you all the windows, how they're going to work. And it also lets you see this is going to go out to a screen back porch. And so these don't have to have screens on them, so we had them up to the outside. The door right here, when it's fully open with the screens on the back porch, will give you a nice flow of air through the whole house. You can see in the corners how we do, which nobody else does, a very nice trust element. It carries the that basically creates a corner structure that allows you and a lot of extra strength. This is all done with incredible wood. In some cases like this, you can count 45 or 50 years of growth across a year and a half, a one and a half inch board. So the strength is incredible. And then we throw in this wonderful galvanized cable. That's a quarter inch cable and that actually goes down and ties into the footings underneath the ground in the concrete. All the way through here, all the way up, all the way over, through the top, all the way back down and over down through this column. And once you put wood on both sides of this column, put a cable in like this, this is incredibly durable. It doesn't want to er tor torque either way. It doesn't want to twist. This is one of the things that allows us to jack our houses up on four points in the corners and allow the house not to bend or hardly move during transport. They're designed to transport all the way across the country if you want to. We then blow in the insulation. It's all flush to the wall. The wrapper on it right here is a I, it's a wrapper that also gives you a radiant barrier, so that stops a lot of the sun's rays from getting through to the insulation in the first place, and then we knock out 94% of what comes through with the isonine. So you get a chance to see all of this as it's being done. The header that comes across, in this case, a gap in the middle, where we actually have insulation in the back half, and still allow our weight to run in the front half to lift this gigantic window up and down, even though it's only going to travel about a foot, it allows us to have air move through here. This is going to be the bedroom at this end when somebody stays here. And so the airflow from here to here is going to be critical. And then this is also going to be a tilt-out window. Beautiful to match the one up above. Well, not to match it, actually much better than that. Now we come out to the back porch. Back porch in this particular instance is very unusual, besides being large. When I say unusual, as you can see, it's got some decent length to it. You're going to be able to come out this end and walk out still under the roof to be able to get downstairs. This goes ahead and allows you to have the bathroom window get a lot more light. So what you're looking at over here is your bathroom. This should be in your shower by the time we're done. This will be your kitchen, which will have a pass-through. As you come into the screen porch right here, this can be either an area where you have a sleeping porch where somebody can have a bed out here or pass through, have inflatable beds when you need them. The thing that's going to be really different about this, the thing that's going to be really unique, is we're actually going to insulate the top, we're going to insulate under the floor, we're going to insulate in the side walls. So when we're done, all you have to do is drop the windows in in the winter, and your screen porch becomes year-round living. Of course, for tax purposes, and all appearances, it's strictly a screen porch. And I'm a big believer in saving that little bit of tax you might save when they look at that and go, oh, just screen porch. Let's go to the next one. What you're looking at here is the front of this house. 
in the back of that house. Now, this is Victorian. This is going to be able to have somebody staying in downstairs for the Murphy bed. It's also going to be able to have somebody staying in upstairs for the kids and the grandkids. And effectively make this full living quarters. Now, it also, like all of our other houses, fully hinged front porch. So all you have to do is literally lift this up, pull these out, fold this down, and you're ready for the storm, or you're ready to transport it, or you're ready for a really good fight, where you don't want to have somebody break these windows during the fight. Whatever it is, you're going to be ready. You can also unbolt the bottom, take the whole thing with you. The railings in this case are all done with a beautiful longleaf pine, all nicely trimmed out. Still a little bit of sanding to go, but you can see how we've all turned the corners to make them all nice on the edges. This is a nice way to be able to do a front porch that will last for ages. What you have here now is a very nice case of using a lot of different elements to create a Victorian look. In this case, we're using some doors. We have some trim that matches around all the doors here to create the bookcase. And ultimately, with the bookcase, there's going to be another set of railings. Very simple ones. You sit out. Very simple railings up above. And this is designed so that you can go straight up the ladder all the way upstairs. To a surprisingly tall upstairs. Now this particular house, I believe, is only 19 foot long. And we weren't going for height in the loft on this one, obviously. But it's still quite comfortable considering we're coming up here and having maybe a couple of tiny twin beds. You have your grandkids up here. Or if you want to, a double bed. This is not intended to be a giant house. It's only 19 foot long and 12 foot wide on the outside. But not bad. The Murphy bed actually is going to be where it's going to be at for most people my age. They're going to be down in here. And when it's done, what appears to be like a couple of doors. I'm going to step back over there. There you go. Just something like this. It's not the right spot. But that will be the headboard. So the bed will actually sit somewhere out in here, and that actually opens up, and that opens up, and that opens up, and that opens up to allow the complete flow of air over the top of the bed and out, as well as a nice bit of morning sun. Um, if you want a little or curtains, you can stop that. Now when it's up, this is a beautiful set of what's called butternut and black walnut to compose this beautiful door. So it's something that you can consider like a piece of furniture. And on the side over here you're going to have a closet. The closet's going to actually have a place for clothes and storing a whole bunch of stuff. So you're going to have a whole bedroom stored in there, over there, and over here you have some shelves. Possibly even with the bottom out and doors on it. We're going to probably leave this open for just open shelving. So when you pull this down, you'll actually have another whole bedroom downstairs. The kitchen in this case actually has drawers. We just didn't have the knobs on them yet. And you can see another one over here. This allows us to use a cast iron sink. And over here we have, and it may burn us up as we go in there because there's a lot of light, but you'll be able to see a beautiful bathroom. This is all done with 1880s circa tin and a broken up granite to make a mosaic floor. And then this again has another beautiful cast iron porcelain sink that's going to go ahead and make it possible again for us to save all that energy. The whole place, 99% pure salvage. We're talking about everything that's been gathered from around some place that's been used. Everything that's basically could have been trash, oftentimes burned, oftentimes gone to rot. All that is used to make this, and this could be the future of our country. As easy as going out, picking it up, and building out of grandma's house. One board in particular, if you can still see it on this wall. It's a beautiful case of just burled pine, for example, and this one piece of wood, you only see one piece like that at every 2,000 square feet. You actually see the little burling and stuff 
also known as curly pine. These walls were a mix of a fir on the bottom and a pine in the middle and then an aged pine on the top. So you actually have three different colors of pine and fir to make up the composition of the colors of the wall naturally, just as a fine tongue wall put on them. But when you look at the age of the trees that were cut, even in the fir, you can count literally hundreds of years of growth across a single board. That's what's so fascinating about this, is that these trees were that old and we'll never see a tree grow to be that old again. So whether it was pines or fir trees, these are the classics, these are the grand old trees that we're trying to go ahead and save from the dump. This is our screen back porch for keeping pests like me out. Sometimes some people think I'm a pest, but this will actually keep nearly all the pests out. It actually is designed so that you can pull these panels apart when you get there, and each of these posts come out, and when the folding of the top is done, you protect all your windows and your doors for the storm, for the hurricane, for whatever comes. Then you put all the screens inside, fill all the parts inside, close it up. When it's all done, you want to move back in again, you pick it back up, prop it up with a couple of sticks, bolt the bottom back on, put the side panels back on with the posts, and you're back in business again. That's good for 150 years. We're going from a Victorian, and this will be a writer's cottage coming up next. This, which was a 12 by 19, compared to this, which is a 10 by 12. That's the size of an average walk-in closet, folks. So imagine you're about to walk in your walk-in closet. Now, of course, your walk-in closet in this case has a balcony on the back. The balcony in this case is going to be with no door on it, over where you're going to be overlooking a river. So it's kind of an overcrop. And above that is your living balcony. That means you can have vegetables growing on it, cucumbers growing on it, and you can have um, herbs up there, and you can have an outdoor shower, and you can have a urinal if you need one at night. So all together, that's a great place. It's also going to provide us with a means of being able to screen it in, or being able to plastic it in for the winter, so we keep the bugs away or the cold away. You are now in what is going to be a writer's camp, cottage. And it allow her to be able to stay here, have a refrigerator, have a little sink, a kitchenette, um, shelves, a little bathroom with a commode, a bedroom upstairs, and a shower outside, a closet upstairs, and a back porch. Effectively everything you really need. You want to go over there, I'll start at the stairs, and you can actually see how this wonderful piece of compression works. Everything we do, as you can see, from actually being inside of the same house with me with the camera, which as you know is a little bit difficult, and as he steps back out of the porch in the back, you can actually see the very extreme, large size of this beautiful place. From there you see 12 foot deep and 10 foot wide with a 6 foot back porch. About a 6 foot front porch. This is the kitchen over here where we will have a refrigerator. And if you had company and they were shy and they wanted to get away, the bathroom over here, which actually have the commode, simply closes off. I can change clothes, be quite comfortable in here, and then when I'm done, open it up and still be able to have the airflow of that beautiful window in here, which allows us to see a dramatic amount of air come through whenever it's not in use. Um, the beauty of this is we also have a little cabinet this is part of it, and with this, pretty much everything you need. Now we'll also have a fold-up table when we're done, a built-in table over there. But come on upstairs and see just how big it is. Now, what's unusual about these steps is you're still only doing a seven-inch rise, so it's not very hard on your knees, ankles, and lower back. But what you are doing is you're doing it in half the distance by taking a step on the left and a step on the right, then forward a step on the left, step on the right. It's really important. The railing in this case is made, it looks like a tusk off of an elephant, but it's actually a black walnut stair railing off of a very elegant stairwell. What that does is allows us to go ahead and twist it and turn it in such a way as I cut it so we can have a rail that follows a very unusual um, shape of the stairs. Up here I'm six foot one with a hat, six two and a half, and you can see I'm quite comfortable. For airflow, again, we can open these up in this fashion and be able to have this air flowing in in all directions and cool this house off, even on the warmest of days, just through the natural airflow. 
Another one over here, you can see the dramatic difference in light. There's space in the back for a closet over there, and then I can go outside. This allows us to be able to go ahead and have a gutter on the back, have a full railing where you could lay down here and sleep at night out in the stars. If there were any mosquitoes out, it would be the most beautiful thing in the world. Why bother going inside? You'd be able to have a shower over in that corner where you see the plumbing coming out at this moment, and it'll come out over the top. Also, the little sink so you can wash your vegetables off um, and stuff like that. Well, maybe even use it for bathing. And uh, we're going to have little rods going to come up from here and allow you to actually have like a tent, a screen on top, so you can tent this in in the wintertime in order to preserve the heat or to keep the grasshoppers off when they're coming through or the locusts or whatever's passing. The idea is, is it's a living house that captures its water off of its drainage system on both sides and through using that limited amount of water creates a limited garden that if you do it right, multi-tiered, you can actually live in here. The floor is actually done right now with two layers of roofing and we're still going to come back in with a layer of wood. So it would allow us, this is a no-tear, heavy, thick rolled roofing, not a real thin layer. <clears throat> and then it also has an impermeable um, second layer underneath that seals all screws or cuts as soon as they're made. So that plus the wood on top will give us a place to put our veggies as well as people. Ultimately, this has a 120 square foot footprint. That's equivalent to a typical walk-in closet in a modern home of 2,200 square foot or something like that. And most people use this much space up going down the hallway to get to the bedroom that has that closet in it. So that's the equivalent of two tiny Texas houses right here. This is one closet. So two closets makes you where the kids are going to stay. And the other one we're in was the main house where everybody gets together. And the little Victorian, that's the mom and daddy's master suite. That's what this is all about. In other words, when you're done, you end up with about 700 square foot. People say, I can't live with 700 square foot. Well, in this case, you get three houses, three bedrooms upstairs. I don't see how you can beat it. Thanks a lot, folks, for visiting. See what we do in September coming up. It's going to be even better than this one. Bye.